Hey, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. Let's get open for business and let's wake up the football gods this morning. Man. Whew. It's been a rough night, man. We were here, if you guys did not tune in last night for our live stream, last night was like the realization of a dream or a partial dream. Um, I remember about a year ago, maybe a little longer, maybe it's been two years, but having a dream of wanting to bring together a bunch of us YouTubers together to make my man cave down here into a studio and being able to go and um, just do YouTube sports different than anybody else. I wanted to make this literally a studio. And so it was about this time last year that I started working outside on building my fire pit. And I built the fire pit and all that, had a couple of chairs around, which is cool, but then I got the inspiration of, it'd be kind of cool if we can put benches around it so that way we can all sit around the fire and, you know, talk about football, smoke a cigar. You know, the bar I built like 15 years ago. So we always had that. And to have Vosh come in town, have E2, you know, get, get a little time away from the newborn. And have DMV and Michael Anthony here and sitting around and doing the live stream around the bar was incredible. You know, then we went outside and we did a live stream on E2 Blues for another hour. You know, we were literally live streaming till like almost 2 a.m. this morning. And it was incredible. And hopefully it gave you guys a little taste of what we're going to be doing when the season gets here. Um, I'm working hard on getting myself better familiar with the equipment and getting all the equipment to be able to do a lot of really cool stuff. And um, I'm hoping that you guys will enjoy what we're doing. But even if you don't enjoy what I'm doing, um, Vosh was saying there's like 62 Dallas Cowboys YouTubers. I guarantee you that there's one out there that fits the flavor that you're looking for. So, you know, make sure you go through and you subscribe to those channels. And if you really like one, comment, like, you know, be part of the conversation and stuff because in the end, we're all better when we're all working together and so on, you know. So, I got up this morning and ended up getting a phone call about my truck. Because my truck has got some issues. You know, I'm one of those old school guys that I don't believe in just buying something new just for buying something new. I just have this thing that I try and make things live on as long as possible. And my truck, a 2005 F-250 with about 280,000 miles on it, it's in the shop today. So I'm waiting to hear back how bad it's going to be. But the thing that my wife always pounds in my head is that you got to have plans, a contingency plan, a backup, a reserve. Because things are always going to happen when you least expect it, you know? I was headed over to go to Don's house this morning first thing so we can go over and put the uh, recessed lights in, do a little touch-up spackling and all that, and now, boom, my truck is in the shop. So you have to plan for these things that you don't expect. And in talking last night, we kind of broke down during our live stream the different groupings, you know, from offensive line to running backs, wide receivers, defensive line, D-backs, and so on. And we were talking about how much competition there's going to be in every position on the field, be that running back, wide receiver, offensive line, everywhere, that there's going to be guys that played productive time last year that might not make the team this year, you know? And when you start thinking about, you know, there's so many guys that we have added onto our roster. When you think about the defensive line, for example, um, Kerry Hader, who in 2016 was an absolute beast who's trying to get back to that level. Christian Covington. Christian Covington is the real deal. He may end up pushing Antoine Woods because you got Antoine Woods there. He's fighting for a position as well. And then you had Robert Quinn. And I don't know that... Um, Randy Gregory is going to end up being suspended for the whole year or not. You've got that guy. You've got Demarcus Lawrence that's out there. There is 
in embarrassment of riches for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, when you look at, I'd like to go back to the 2017 season. That was our Cowboys problem. We weren't prepared, like they say in scouts, you know, be prepared. We weren't prepared to take hits. You couldn't argue with Des Bryant being healthy or, or Travis Frederick or Zach Martin or Tyron Smith or Sean Lee. Those were frontline, Jason Witten, those were frontline guys that you know are going to make a difference on a team. And if you have those guys healthy, chances were pretty good that you're going to win. But it's when you end up getting that suspension from the NFL and they take Zeke Elliott away for six games. You end up having Tyron Smith back flare up and he's gone for three games. You lose Sean Lee, you know, every other week because of a hamstring. Because the Cowboys weren't prepared for those hits, because they didn't have the quality people that could step in, you know, not necessarily to be that player, but to fill in as a role, we just failed. I hate to keep talking about Chaz Green, but that Chaz Green from Tyron Smith, when we ended up losing Sean Lee, when we ended up losing Zeke Elliott, there was no plan for those guys not being there. Last year, you could see we had learned some because in that offseason, the Cowboys did the best that they could to go ahead and get some depth. They brought in a Cam Fleming, a, a Xavier Salafalo, and I know I screw up his name, Vosh. So just stop. You know I'm the name butcher, okay? I'm going to start calling you Voach, okay? You ended up of course, drafting Leighton Van Der Esch and, you know, Jalen Smith got better. So you were able to absorb the Sean Lees being injured. You were able to lose Tyron Smith for a few games. You had a Joe Looney when Travis Frederick went down. And that's where the Dallas Cowboys are right now. I don't know what the talking heads or experts are looking at there when they say that the Dallas Cowboys are you know, 18th ranked, you know, or uh, they've got no chance to make the playoffs. If we made the playoffs with uh, Amari Cooper, who only played half of the season, came in cold, went 7-2 and two down the stretch, why is it that you don't think that the Cowboys will do better with him being in a training camp, adding a Randall Cobb and a Jason Witten? But you now have, if you lose one of those guys, quality people that are behind them. Going into last season, we were looking at Alan Hearns being our number one guy. He's fourth or fifth. Last year, Xavier Salafalo was a starter for us. He might not make the team this year because of all the death. Joe Looney was a starter. Joe Looney... If all things are right, won't hit the field this year. And so you start looking and seeing that this team is actually pretty loaded. You look from everywhere, with the exception of the kicking game, the Cowboys improved. And now you have a better coaching staff than where you were. And it seems like this team is more prepared to be able to weather a storm. Now, make no mistake, we got a tough schedule. First half is easy. we got to get out and start real well. Second half is a lot more difficult. But I feel really confident. I feel really good about this team that we're putting together. Training camp is less than a month away. And you're going to probably see some of the fiercest battles on this team than we've seen in a long time because guys are fighting not only for a starting job, these guys are fighting for a job. And that is across the board. Connor Williams will probably be guard, but he really wants to play tackle. Lyle Collins better not get a hangnail or miss any time. You look at the defensive line. These guys are not only playing for 
the Dallas Cowboys for this year. They're auditioning for their next contract. It means they're going to be hungry and doing. You know, when, when you are trying to get that extra contract and stuff, you don't alligator arms. You don't, you know, you sell out. And that's what you got with these Dallas Cowboys. And I'm hoping that with all the shade that everybody's throwing in, with all the disrespect and calling Dak a dink and dunker, Zeke Elliott, and he's not really one of the best 25 under 25, that the Great Wall of Dallas is, you know, not what they used to be. That the coaching of Jason Garrett is, eh. That they take all of this to heart, put that chip on the shoulder, get that bunker mentality and say, we are going to prove you guys wrong. Because I think they're going to be prepared this year. So, that being said, well, I gotta go hitch a ride to Home Depot so I can get what I need to get over to Don um, and Sandra's house and get that stuff squared away. Always, always plan for the unexpected. I'm Mark Holmes, and thank everybody for being here last night. Um, that wasn't the end. That is really the beginning of what we're going to accomplish here at the Joe Blue Sports Report. Season's getting close, and I got a lot of work to do as we sit 68 days, 9 hours, and 55 minutes away from kickoff of the 2019 season. Hope you have a great Saturday, and I'll see you soon.